Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll get the webinar started here shortly, um, but as we wait for people to trickle in, I am going to play the short video. For the duration of the webinar, I can just ask that you guys keep um, your microphones off. Um, and yeah, if you do have any questions, uh, please let us know in the chat. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is not just an idea or a dream. It's the promise of a new day and a better world. Tomorrow belongs to the change makers and the risk takers, the passionate, the daring, and the bold. This is our tomorrow. All of us, together. This is where and how we live, shaped by our community, our neighbors, our friends, and our rivals. Shaped by those who challenge us to think bigger, move faster, and achieve more. By those who came before us and fashioned this university from sheer determination. We're pioneers at heart, innovators by necessity, and community builders because, well, we're from Calgary. Where that legendary can-do spirit has blossomed into a will-do commitment. And like Calgary, this university attracts people from around the world with ambitious dreams and the courage to fulfill them. We educate students to become community builders. We conduct research that changes the world. And we enhance the intellectual, social, and cultural landscape of our region. It's true. Our campuses draw disruptors, instigators, and challengers of convention. Those who seek and share answers to society's greatest challenges. Because tomorrow demands global attention to challenges we can only begin to imagine. Tomorrow our students are preparing for now, and our researchers are striving to understand. A tomorrow we're ready to face, fueled by the energy and passion of our students, postdoctoral scholars, faculty, staff, alumni, donors, and cherished friends. By discovering and creating new ideas that have a meaningful impact on the world around us, we can improve our world and deliver the promise of a new tomorrow together. What is your name? I'm... Awesome. Okay, I think we are good to get started now. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Camille and I am a student recruitment advisor uh, with the undergraduate recruitment team at the University of Calgary. Uh, tonight, I will be joined by my colleague, Mackenzie Bierbaum. Uh, she will be in the chat. So if you do have any questions uh, any, at any point throughout the presentation, please feel free to send them in the chat. Um, if we are unable to get to your question today, um, please do send us an email so we can get back to you. We'd love to be able to assist with um, whatever questions you may have. Um, and without further ado, we'll get started here. Um, I hope everybody is able to see my presentation slide. If not, please do pop that in the chat. Um, but a little bit of an introduction. Um, Mackenzie and I are actually both University of Calgary alumni, so we're very excited um, to be here with you this evening. Um, I know that we have participants from uh, different parts of Canada, so welcome everybody. Um, I also did just want to clarify this webinar is primarily catered, catered for uh, students who have received an offer of admission. So those who have been accepted to the University of Calgary. So a very big congratulations to all of you. And we look forward um, to having you as part of our University of Calgary community. Um, tonight's presentation, I will just start with a little bit of an introduction to the university. Then we'll cover uh, the next steps, um, a little bit about what you can expect a little bit about what you can expect um, moving forward as well as a student. I would like to respectfully begin with a territorial acknowledgement in recognition that 
the land where the University of Calgary is sitting are the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, the Ghani, and Gainai First Nations, as well as the Sutina First Nations and the Stony Dakota, which includes the Chiniki, Bear Spa, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. I would encourage everybody, if you would like to learn more about the lands um, that we are privileged to call home, um, please do visit ucalgary.ca slash indigenous. If you haven't um, signed up for our mailing list yet and you'd, you'd like to uh, receive important reminders and additional information from the University of Calgary, uh, please make sure that you scan this QR code so you can be included in our mailing list. Um, it's a great way to stay in touch and keep connected throughout the admissions process. So um, I'll keep the QR code up there for um, a few seconds. Give everybody a moment. Perfect. Um, we also have a couple of QR codes here if you would like to access a digital copy of our view books. Um, this will have more information again on the university, um, our different programs, things like awards and housing. Um, so you can go ahead and scan that and I'll leave that up for again a few seconds. Okay, um, so now this is just a fun little introduction to the city of Calgary. I think we do have some folks here from Calgary, so a lot of this may be familiar to you. But for those of um, our, for those of us who are uh, not in Calgary, um, this is just a brief overview to the city of Calgary, um, what we call a city of choice. Um, there's a lot of things uh, in the city of Calgary that even as someone who grew up here in Calgary, I didn't know about. So um, one of the things that I really love about Calgary is it's still a city where there's a lot of um, change and growth throughout the years. It's still exciting, it's young, it's diverse. There's a lot of energy here. Um, but at the same time, I love that our proximity to um, the mountains um, and just pristine nature really allows us to enjoy a great work-life balance. Um, so one of the things um, that I really like is that if you are interested in um, connecting with a, an organization, a company that has um, a local, national, or even a global outreach, um, you certainly have the chance to connect with them here in Calgary. Um, but at the same time, if you want to um, take a breather, um, if you want to go on an adventure, um, explore the mountains, um, we're very lucky uh, just by nature of where we are located that we have uh, pretty quick access to those um, beautiful places. We are also known as Canada's sunniest major city. We get over 333 days of sunshine per year. Um, we also get warm Chinook winds. Um, so I know a lot of people probably have um, some preconceived notions about Calgary. Like, is it always minus 40 there? Um, the answer is no, not always. We do get um, a few days here and there um, with frigid temperatures, but um, there's also um, a lot of sunshine here and we do get those warm uh, Chinook winds. Also, one really cool thing, um, we've been named as the number one most livable city um, in North America. Uh, if you're looking to um, explore the um, restaurant scene, there's a lot of different restaurants that you can explore here. Um, and again, it's just a great place to live overall. This is an important thing to consider um, for when you uh, make that decision for what university you'd like to attend, because again, you'll be rooting yourself there for the next few years of your life. Um, so those are some um, important things to consider. And now um, a brief introduction to the University of Calgary. Um, so the University of Calgary was actually founded in 1966. So we're a relatively young um, university, especially when you consider that some um, universities have been around for literally centuries. 
Um, but within that short period of time, the University of Calgary has grown um, quite significantly um, and exponentially. We are known as a top six research university in Canada um, with over 28,000 undergraduate students with over 150 different uh, countries represented on campus. We are also known as Canada's Entrepreneurial University. Um, and what that means is, I know when we mention entrepreneurial, the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people is starting their own business. But when we talk about entrepreneurship at the University of Calgary, it, it really is more about the methodology and how we encourage our students um, and our faculty members to um, pursue innovation, creativity, um, that has an impact on the world. Um, I do get some questions as well about, are there notable alumni from the University of Calgary? So I'll just uh, mention a quick few. Uh, so James Gosling, he is the creator of the Java programming language. He is um, an alumna of the university. We also have former Prime Minister Stephen Harper, uh, Garrett Camp, who is a co-founder of Uber. Um, as well as Robert Thirsk, who's a Canadian astronaut. Uh, he was actually also a former, former chancellor of the university. So yeah, just some quick fun facts about the university. And here we have an aerial uh, shot of our main campus. So the University of Calgary actually has five campuses. Um, and the one that you see here is our main campus in the northwest quadrant of the city of Calgary. And in the back, you can also see a little bit of our Foothills campus, which houses our uh, Faculty of Medicine, um, as well as some of our other um, health science programs. But for the most part, as an undergraduate student, most of your classes will be here in our main campus. Um, it's over 500 acres of park-like space, um, but it's actually uh, not that difficult to get to one part of campus from the other. Um, what I really like about campus as well is it's quite accessible through the public transit system. So we have a university train station right on campus. We also have a bus loop, um, and this allows for um, the ease of transportation across different parts of the city. As a University of Calgary student, you will also be given a U-Pass, um, which allows you to access transit for free to get to um, wherever you may need to go. Okay, so next steps. Um, once you have received an offer, you, you should actually receive a package from the University of Calgary um, with your next steps. Um, but further information can also be found on our webpage there. Uh, we do get a lot of questions. So if you have been accepted to your first choice, congratulations. Um, some may have actually heard uh, and received an offer from their second choice and they're still waiting to hear back from their first choice. I do just wanna clarify, if you accept your second choice, um, we will continue to consider you for your first choice. Um, and if you are able to receive an offer of admission for your first choice, uh, we can transfer your deposit from your second choice to your first choice. Um, if you have received an alternate offer and have any questions about that, uh, please do reach out to our team and we'd be more than happy to um, help uh, assist you with any questions that you might have. How do you accept your offer? You can do this on your uh, in your student center. And if you do have questions again about that as well, please feel free to reach out. So there is a $500 non-refundable tuition deposit. Uh, for most high school students, this would be due on May 1st, 2022. Please keep in mind again, if you get accepted to your second choice, we are able to um, transfer this $500 deposit to your first choice if you are able to um, get an offer for your first choice as well. We have an upcoming event, You at U Calgary. This will be on April 9th, 2022. This is for all of our students who have been accepted to the University of Calgary. This is an opportunity for them to connect with their home faculties, as well as with their peers who have also been accepted to their program. Um, highly encourage everyone to attend that. Uh, we also have further information on how to register for that event at a later point in the presentation. Course registration begins uh, in May 2022. I will have again further information on that a little bit later on 
in the presentation. So I do just want to take some time to explain about what a conditional offer is. Uh, and I think for most students, they would have actually received a conditional offer. So applicants who have received a conditional offer have to meet a series of criteria so that we can finalize their uh, admission later on. So first, they have to maintain their average. They have to complete all of the required courses for their program of choice. They must submit any outstanding documents uh, as outlined in their to-do list. So that's really important. After you apply, keep an eye out for the to-do list that is in your student center to make sure you've submitted any necessary to submit all of the necessary documents. Um, and you must also graduate from high school. A common question that we get about maintaining your average is that um, some students are um, apply with a higher average than what the competitive average is for their program. So just to clarify, the average that you maintain isn't necessarily the average that you apply with. The average that you have to meet is the competitive average for your program of choice. Um, so in May, we will actually send you um, a message in your student center that will indicate what that average is that you have to meet in order to maintain your offer of admission. So it's not necessarily the average that you apply with, it's the competitive average for your program, which isn't really determined uh, until uh, May where we will display it in your student center so you know exactly what that average is that you have to maintain. About course registration, so starting in March, uh, between March and April, you can actually shop for your classes and preload your shopping cart. So the way I like to think about this is like if you were online shopping, you can add things to your cart. So starting in uh, March and April, you can actually add courses to your cart um, and you can use our high school registration website and the first year degree guide to help you with selecting your courses if you do have questions about this please feel free to reach out to our team um, but in march and april you can start to add uh, classes to your shopping cart and then uh, in may we will give you an exact enrollment appointment date where you can actually check out or actually enroll in those courses. Uh, starting in June and July, um, you can explore uh, government student loan opportunities. So in order for you to access your government student loan, you actually have to be registered um, at a university. So that's something to keep in mind. And we recommend it around August that you make sure you understand the tuition and general fees and if you need to opt out of the health and dental plan, which comes with um, all of our undergraduate full time students, um, you'll want to connect with us if you do have questions about that. Okay, so now you might also want to consider living on campus. If you would like to live on campus, there's a variety of different options for you, whether you would like to be placed in a double or a single room. Um, for double rooms, you if you have a friend that you'd like to room with, that's something that we can help together for you. Um, or if you still need a roommate, we can match you with someone um, after you complete a profile so that you can um, room with someone that you would hopefully get along well with. If you are interested in a guaranteed room and residence, you must apply by May 1st. So you actually don't need to have an offer of admission, admission to apply for residence, but you must apply by May 1st if you want to have a guaranteed room and res residence. So you can apply after May 1st, but we just can't guarantee um, that we will have room for you. So if you think you will need to live on residence, please make sure uh, that you submit an application by May 1st. Um, there's a lot of different things to consider as well when you're living um, in residence. Uh, there, we have different meal plan options for you, um, but it's a great way, especially if you're from out of province or from out of the city, um, it's one of the easiest way to make friends. It's also really convenient to be able to go um, between your classes uh, and home in a uh, short distance. So if you do have questions on this, uh, let us know. But consider living on campus. 
we have our new student orientation, which typically happens in uh, late August to early September. Again, I would highly encourage everyone to attend the new student orientation. Um, it's a great way to meet members of your faculty, um, to meet members of the actual program or major uh, that you are in. It's a great way to uh, tour campus. It's a great way to have any pressing questions that you might have answered before classes actually start. Um, there's also a, a, a series of events like kickoff where you go out and watch the University of Calgary football team um, kick off their season. Now, a little bit about the first year experience. So again, you know, when people apply to university and they start to, um, they start their studies in university, a lot of people are going to start to feel nervous about that transition. Um, but as much as we like to encourage our students to do well in their academics, we also like to encourage our students to really get involved on campus uh, and enhance their student experience by participating in campus events or in clubs. So at the University of Calgary, we do have over 300 student clubs that you can join. It's a great way to meet like-minded individuals, start to build your network, um, build on any of your um, personal or professional development skills. Again, uh, consider joining a club or joining one of our emerging leaders programs, uh, maybe cheering on the dinos. So let's really start to think about these things about how you can enhance that student experience for yourself. We also have um, different active living facilities that you can uh, make the most out of. So if you are a full-time student at the University of Calgary, just by showing your UC ID, you will have access to these world-class facilities that we are so lucky to have at the University of Calgary. Um, so we do have an aquatic center, which houses an Olympic-sized swimming pool. We have a fitness center, a gymnastics center. We have the Olympic Oval, um, which hosted the 1988 Winter Olympics. And to this day, a lot of our Team Canada athletes actually continue to uh, train out of the space. So you never really know who you're going to run into. It's an exciting time, especially ahead of the um, upcoming Winter Olympics here. We also have the Racket Center and the Outdoor Center. Both are the largest of its kind in North America. So um, really a lot of exciting ways to stay active on campus. A lot of students do use these facilities in between classes if they want to um, blow off some steam or just get together with their friends. Um, there's also opportunities to participate in intramural sports teams, uh, to join a fitness class or other sports clubs. So. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite slides uh, to talk about. One thing that you could also consider to really um, enhance your student experience at the University of Calgary is by participating in a study abroad. Um, so there's opportunities to study, to work, or to volunteer abroad. Um, personally, this was a really big part of uh, my time at the university. I completed two study abroad programs, so one in Singapore and one in Italy just before the pandemic. Um, a lot of students do ask, is this an opportunity that's still available for students in this um, pandemic times. It is. Um, we've actually started to send students again abroad. So I would encourage everyone to look into studying abroad. Um, it's a great way to uh, build on your intercultural capacities. You want to go on an adventure and at the same time still contribute towards your academics. Um, you can earn credit towards your University of Calgary degree. Um, so it's a great way to uh, get uh, an adventure as well as work on your um, academics. Another thing to think about is participating in a work integrated learning experience. So we like to encourage our students at the University of Calgary um, that by the time they finish their program, for them to have some sort of hands-on uh, work experience related to their program. Um, so there's a variety of ways that you can um, get involved with this experience. Uh, so, so some of our programs like nursing, education, and kinesiology, um, there's already a built-in practicum requirement. Um, but we also offer cooperative education or co-op work terms, um, as well as internships 
depending on what um, faculty you're in. We have hundreds of paid positions available um, in different faculties, again, in arts, science, engineering, and business. Um, and some of our recent placements um, include Garmin, Suncor, Amazon, the UN Association of Canada. So there's a lot of opportunities here to have hands-on um, work experience before you even graduate, which is a great way um, to get a leg up in the recruitment process after you graduate, um, just because you already have prior work experience. I would also like to highlight the different student supports that we have on campus. Uh, the way we like to describe campus is like a city within a city. Um, because you never really had to leave campus to access all of these different services that are really crucial for students as we navigate um, life in post-secondary. Uh, so we have our career services office where you can go uh, to attend interview workshops if you're looking for support with your resume or if you're looking for career advising, that's a great place to visit. Uh, we also have student wellness services, which is a one-stop shop for accessing things like counseling, if you would like to see a doctor, or if you'd like to learn more about um, managing your stress, um, that's a great place to visit. We also have a student success center um, where you can access writing support if you're looking for academic advising or if you're looking to attend a peer-led study session. Um, and there's a lot more here that um, offer dedicated uh, support for students, but those are just a few that I can highlight. Now a little bit about undergraduate awards. So I understand that um, your university education is a significant investment into your future. Um, and as such, the University of Calgary does give out $17 million uh, annually in scholarships, bursaries, and awards. I will go over a few of them here in the next uh, few slides. So we have three main categories of awards at the University of Calgary. We have our automatic awards, our high school entrance awards, as well as our prestige awards. So the deadline for the prestige awards has actually already passed. Um, so if you haven't submitted um, an application for our awards yet, um, the two remaining awards that we have available right now are the automatic awards and the high school entrance awards. For the automatic awards, you actually do not need to submit an additional application. All you have to do is apply for admission to the University of Calgary. And depending on the admission average that you apply with, you may be eligible to receive between $2,000 to $5,000. Now our high school entrance awards, you do need to submit an application for this. You can access the application in your student center, so your MyU Calgary portal, um, and it only takes 15 minutes. And it's like a check yes or no questionnaire type of um, application. The deadline to apply for this is March 1st, which is the same day that our applications are due. So please make sure that you fill in an application for the high school entrance awards. Just by submitting this one single application, uh, you can be considered for over 200 different high school entrance awards that we offer. And these are just some examples of uh, the high school entrance awards that we offer. They all have their own unique um, eligibility criteria. But again, all you have to do is fill in that one high school entrance awards application, and then we will review you for all of the ones that you would be eligible for. There are also thousands of external awards that are offered um, by various groups, organizations, companies around the world. A great place um, to visit would be ucalgary.ca slash awards. It's a great starting point to get an idea of the different awards um, that are out there. As I mentioned before, government student loans are also an option for Canadian citizens and permanent residents, um, regardless of whether they're studying full time or part time. But again, as I mentioned earlier, you do have to be registered at a university or post secondary institution before you can access government student loans. For most students, they would actually be looking at starting their applications uh, around July to August. Um, so do keep that in mind. 
And some important dates here for you. March 1st, that is when our application is due. So you'll want to make sure if you haven't already. I know for most people, you've already been accepted to the University of Calgary. Um, but in case we do have others out there who are still looking to apply, March 1st is the deadline to submit an application. By March 15th, um, all unofficial transcripts and supporting documents, uh, any required documents for admission should be uploaded onto your student center. Um, May 1st is the deadline for students to accept their offer. Uh, June 30th, that's the deadline for completion of all high school courses that are required for, ad for admission. Um, and final official transcript should be sent uh, in August. And September 6th, that is when classes start. If you are interested in any of our upcoming events, um, like you at UCalgary, which I highly encourage everyone to attend if you have already been accepted to, univer to the university, um, you can scan that QR code or you can visit our website um, using that link there on the slide. Um, you can register for all of our upcoming events there, or if you'd like to sign up for a campus tour, you can, act you can also do so um, on that website. And here are just, I think there are more than five reasons to choose U Calgary. Um, but if you do need um, a quick summary here, a quick five reasons to choose U Calgary, um, we have our excellence in academics. There are research opportunities here if that's something that you're interested in doing. Um, we have a caring University of Calgary community. There are opportunities for you to earn while you learn, as well as to live an adventurous lifestyle um, while you are pursuing your studies. Please do um, follow us to stay in touch on our uh, various social media platforms. So we have um, our Instagram, Choose You Calgary. On Facebook, we are University of Calgary Future Students. We also have a YouTube channel, University of Calgary Future Students, as well as our Choose You Calgary podcast. Um, the Choose You Calgary podcast is a great resource if you're interested in hearing from current students, from members of faculty, and from other members of the University of Calgary community about all of the cool things that are going on at the university, as well as some um, tips and advice uh, for incoming university students. And now we will have some time for questions. The chat has been busy, I haven't been able to see it throughout the presentation. Camille, do you know when students typically find out um, if they have gotten a spot in residence? Well, I would not know that off the top of my head, but we can definitely look into that. Um, I don't think it's posted on their website anywhere, but I would imagine students typically find out in the June, July area. So you have time to plan. So I'm just reading it. Um, so rather than typing, because that's going to take longer, we can just go through now um, where we're at. We're on MICAs, which is, are you guys doing campus tours with COVID and everything? Um, so we are currently not offering in-person campus tours until February 19th. Um, we're doing virtual ones until then, but after February 19th, we're able to book both public tours and private tours, depending on what you're wanting. And I'll put both of those links back in the chat. Reese asks, do you need to pay a deposit to register for residence? Um, I don't believe that there is a deposit required just to apply for residence. There, there's a $50 application fee, not a deposit, but an application fee. So what is the parking situation like for students living in residence? 
Um, students living in residence do have to get a parking pass. Um, there is a cost for it. I don't know what it is off the top of my head either, but I'll look up a link and put that in the chat um, for you. It looks like we are getting um, quite a bit of questions about residents. Um, I think it'd be helpful to have the contact for resident services as well, because I think uh, some of these questions would be better supported by resident services. So I'm just going to put their information and share it with everybody. Um, if you wanted a single room and you ended up in a double room, can you reject your residence offer? Yes. Um, the high school awards application is done through our high school. No, that is done through your student center, which you gain access to after you apply. This is where you'd see your current applications, where you're able to accept your offer, and there'll be a link to apply for scholarships in that um, student center. Um, I know you answered this already, but I'm still iffy on the whole competitive average thing. We won't know until May. Someone from UCalgary Calgary Support said that it was the average from last year's pool that applied to the 2020 pool. That That's not the case. Um, the averages fluctuate until that two weeks, um, last two weeks of April when those averages are released to students. Um, I would keep track of what the estimated competitive average is for the program that you're applying to, which is available um, on our website. I'll put the link for that in the chat now. And as long as you're staying in that range, I wouldn't stress too much. Can you switch to a double major after being accepted for a majors program? So it sounds like you would have to actually change your application. Um, you can make changes to your application uh, up until March 1st, which is the application deadline. Um, but one thing to um, be aware of is if you do change your application, you might lose your offer that you currently have as we have to reevaluate your application. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Is there any penalty after accepting your offer, paying the $500 deposit, and then later withdrawing from the university before September 2022? So the $500 deposit is actually non-refundable. Um, so if you if you accept your offer and you pay $500 and then you withdraw from the university, you can't get the $500 back um, as it is non-refundable. Um, one that I saw is, can you apply for residence for only one term instead of the full semester? Um, we don't have terms, so it's full semester for sure. And I believe you have to um, apply for residence for the whole year. So fall and winter semesters. One that I'm also seeing is, are there any on-campus job opportunities? Um, there are job opportunities. You can work for the fitness center, the pool. I know some students that work at the library. We have some student staff on our team um, in recruiting. Um, so really anywhere there might be opportunities for students to work at the university. Okay. What happens if I apply to a combined degree but only got accepted to one? Um, so this would really depend on what messaging you have in your student center. Um, if it says that we will review you again at a later time for the other uh, program that you apply to, then you might still have a chance to do the combined degree. But if in the end of the cycle, you only have that offer to um, that one program in the combined degree, um, then you are still eligible to continue on into that one, one program. You would be enrolled in the one program. If you do not have a vehicle, does your transportation pass work for the whole city? Yeah, that's right. So the U pass, um, that is for Calgary Transit to access um, the entire Calgary Transit system. Um, if you don't live in residence, what's the parking fee around? Um, that all depends on what parking lot 
um, you are getting a pass for. It can get pretty pricey um, each semester. There are some cheaper options, getting a parking pass for a McMahon Stadium, and I will put um, a link to the parking page so you can look into it in the chat. If you don't live in residence, what's the parking fee around? So I'm, I'm wondering, I think this is a question about parking on campus. So we do have a variety of different parking lots around campus. So there's multiple parking lots around campus and um, they will all have different rates. So some are hourly, some are semester permit only. I think Mackenzie has included a link there in the chat for more details about parking at the University of Calgary, but there are different um, parking rates depending on the lot uh, on campus. Um, if you accept, if you were accepted for the undeclared major, when do you declare one? Um, so I believe that happens after you've completed maybe two years of school. Camille can correct me on that if I'm wrong, um, but at that point you'll have to apply for a change of program to go into a major. If you don't do that by the deadline, um, then you're no longer in a program because um, there's, there's a deadline for that. Do you have to include your step parents income when applying for the high school scholarship if they don't support you financially? Um, I am not too sure about, about that. Um, I would have you email awards directly just to get some clarification. I don't believe you would, um, but let me just pull up the information here. Um, I also just put a link in the chat for you, Miranda, for our the cheerleading group at U Calgary. Um, any information on the ASHA program? So ASHA is the Arts and Science Honors Academy. Um, students are invited to join this program um, if they're top applicants and really interested in multidisciplinary study. So you don't just have to be a science student if you're also interested in the art side. So history, uh, social studies, languages, that kind of stuff, you can take part in ASHA. It does have separate kind of changes your degree requirements a little bit because it gives you um, that's designated on your degree, your parchment when you graduate that you took part in ASHA. How do we access um, to apply for job opportunities? So once you're a student, there's an internal job board that you'll have access to. Um, but then beyond that, you can Google UCalgary jobs. You can filter what's available. Um, I know for lots of our students, they hear about it through peers or maybe people they know that already work at the university and that's how they get jobs. Or maybe they're in kinesiology and are already really um, close to the fitness centers, that kind of stuff, and they find hear about openings and then they apply. Is it possible to add another degree later on? Um, there is there is still a possibility to make changes to the program that you're in, um, but it would be called a change, it would be a change of program. So you would actually want to connect with your home faculty, so the one that you're in and then the one that you would like to transfer to or maybe add a degree to, um, to determine exactly what the admission requirements are. Um, but it is possible to add an honors degree, add a minor, or if you want to add another degree, that's something that you would have to speak um, to the faculty about. Um, Shayla, I just tried looking into uh, Asha again to see if it costs anything. Um, I, I haven't been able to find if there's an additional cost, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was one, but I'll, I'll keep searching for you. Is there an application fee for applying to residents? Yes, there is an application fee. Mackenzie, I believe you said this was $50, right? $50. Ad for residents, yeah. If you do join ASHA, can you still do a minor? Um, I believe that you can. I'm from out of province, just wondering if it's easier with public 
transportation or own vehicle. Um, I'm also not going to live in residence. Um, it kind of depends up to you what you're looking for. I know lots of people who have lived in Calgary all their lives, work at U of C now and still choose to take transit because it's accessible for them, um, vice versa. I drive to campus, even though I've lived in Calgary all my life. So depending on what's best for you um, in terms of cost, convenience, where you live, that kind of stuff will depend on what you want to do. Um, if you have a connection to a company that takes internships, can you go to them or is there a different process that prevents that from happening? Um, you would actually want to speak to your faculty. They're the ones who facilitate the, um, the internships. Uh, so I believe you would have to double check with them um, just to make sure. But typically our students do have to apply for the co-op work term or for the internship that they will be um, joining. So in this case, you would want to connect um, with your faculty to explain your situation. Um, what do you mean by high school transfer credits? If you're um, thinking IB, um, IB is kind of separate. You have to achieve over a five um, to gain credit for the courses that you took at the higher level. If you took AP, I think the grade is also um, five to gain credit at the university for those courses. Um, but if that doesn't answer your question, please uh, come back to me with that. So if I take ASHA, would it take a lot of my effort and time? Um, I don't know what the time requirement is for students. It is an extra thing that you're doing. Um, it's different classes. There's lots of experiential learning, that kind of stuff. Um, but it is manageable for students. If you're really interested in multidisciplinary experiential learning, making really great professor connections, um, and you've been asked to join ASHA, I would definitely consider it or connect with them further to see what that time commitment and effort is going to uh, be like. Is there a direct link to access the high school awards? So you would have to log into your student center, so your MyU Calgary portal, and then you'll want to select awards. Then you should be able to find the high school entrance awards there. So you have to log into your student center. So our average that you Calgary looks at is only calculated with the five required courses for our program and none of our other courses. So yes, for the admission average, we would um, get your admission average using the required courses for admission to your program. Um, if I took an AP exam last year, can I still send it in to gain credits? Yes, you can. Um, that you'll have to send from, what is the organization called again? Is it is it College Board? Um, it'll have to come directly from the AP agency. Um, so we have a question about any information on dual credit transfer credits. Um, so one thing to uh, be aware of about dual credits, if, if you have taken less than 12 units, so if you've taken less than four courses, uh, you would still be considered as a high school applicant, but you may be eligible to receive um, university credit for that course that you took, uh, for that post-secondary level course that you took, um, that will have to be uh, assessed by our admissions team to determine exactly what that uh, that what that course is equivalent to at the University of Calgary. Uh, but you would still be considered a high school applicant as long as you um, don't have twelve or more units. Um, for Sophie, related to the classes that she's taking at the university level, but as a grade 12 student, um, we don't have a specific process for checking if those transfer. Um, apply, 
while you've already applied. We'll evaluate those courses if you'll get credit for those. Um, but because you're in grade 12, doesn't change the admission requirements. So, you know, leave it up to the admissions team to have that evaluated. If the student is in residence, does this cover also summer or spring, or do we have to pay extra? There is um, different fees for summer and spring in residence. And I'll send the link um, to examples of those costs. Um, Anna asks, is there any research opportunities? Yes. So we actually have um, a variety of different uh, research opportunities, even at the undergraduate level. So one thing that you might want to look at is um, pure. I'm going to send a link here so that you can um, look into it further. But there are a lot of different undergraduate research opportunities um, for our students across different faculties. So just back to Julia, it depends on the school that you took those courses from, what course it was. Um, when you applied, hopefully you included that you had attended another university, um, the dates that you attended those so that we can retrieve those transcripts, evaluate those courses and see if you get any credit um, for having taken those courses at another institution. Um, so I initially applied for the DQ application and needed a reference, but I got an email saying I don't need the DQ application anymore since I already got conditionally accepted based on the academics. So it said I don't need a reference. However, on my to-do list on the Student Center, um, it is still asking to upload a, re uh, a reference. So even though the, the to-do list shows that, um, it's not going to affect your application. It's sort of just one of those things that hasn't been taken off yet. If you send a private message to me with your UCID number, it's eight digits, I'll send a note to admissions to have that removed. Um, is this recorded anywhere? It is being recorded and I believe it's going to be uploaded to our YouTube in the next week or so. And I'll send a link to our YouTube channel in the chat. Um, and if, um, if not, then I think you would also be able to send us an email so we can directly send you a link um, if you have trouble accessing the recording of the webinar. Um, but I do just wanna, um, make a note here, I, there were a couple of questions about transfer credits. Um, so if you if you study in Alberta at a post-secondary institution in Alberta, um, one useful resource might be uh, Transfer Alberta, where you can input the course that you took from one post-secondary institution and then see what that might transfer over um, as at the University of Calgary. For Ashley, uh, there are washing machines available for students on each floor, and I believe even potentially each wing um, on each floor. It, it's like coin operated right now. I think they're working on changing that, um, but it's coin operated to access it. And I believe students need to supply their own detergent and stuff. So we did, I did get a question about tours. Um, yes, we do offer tours. So we have in-person and virtual options for tours. Right now, our in-person tours um, are temporarily um, postponed. We are hoping to resume again at a later time in February, um, but you don't have to wait till the student orientation if you would like to come and visit us for a campus tour. For residents, are the male and female rooms in the same area or are they separate? Uh, so we do have um, wings in the residents that are um, male only or female only, but we also have our co-ed wings. Um, so there are different options there. For the all you care to eat meal plan, what does it include? So we have uh, the dining center um, that is attached to our residence. And 
it is like a buffet style um, fresh food prepared um, right in front of you usually. So um, it's actually a really great place to, to eat. As a team, we visited and the food was great, um, but it is like a buffet style. Um, there's different um, there's different options depending on what your dietary restrictions are, but the all you care to eat meal plan would um, allow you to access that pretty much for all your meals. How long? Uh, sorry, sorry, you go. No, you go. Okay, no, I, was just gonna, I just saw how long is one term. So at the University of Calgary, we have our main academic terms, which are our fall and winter semester. So fall is typically from September to December, and then winter is from January um, till April. And then we have shorter um, spring and summer intercessions, which are typically five weeks long. Um, have you tried uh, the roommate matching system? Is it pretty good at uh, matching people? Um, I've heard good things. I didn't personally live in residence, and so therefore I didn't try the system. Um, but it's all about finding people that are going to, you know, have similar qualities to you. Maybe you like getting up early. We want someone who likes that too. Maybe you like sleeping in, someone like that. Maybe you're into athletics, that kind of stuff. We want to find people um, that really fit you so that hopefully um, you guys are a good match. Um, can you use your food pass to get food for other people? Um, no, you can't. It's done using your uh, university ID card. So it's got your picture on it. Um, so to get in, it's for you, one person. Um, and if you start with a meal plan, can you stop if you don't like it? Um, I believe you have to pay the whole semester. Um, but if you're a first year student, it's and living in residence, the whole year is required. So it's required that you take part in the meal plan if you're in your first year. Uh, I am from another province. Once summer break comes, will I have my residence or will I have to move all my stuff out and then bring it back in the following fall? Um, I believe there are some options um, to just, if you could keep the same room um, so that you don't have to move. But if you do have to move, you can, I think they do have some storage facilities available in residence where you can store your things for the summer um, in the meantime. And then eventually, if you need to move to a different room, at least you'll have your um, things already in residence. But I believe this is subject to availability um, depending on the space. If roommates don't get along, can you change? Yeah, um, uh, we do have our resident services uh, team that you can connect with. So if you're not getting getting along well with your uh, with your roommate, um, there is an opportunity to ask to have it changed, and um, we will work with you so that you can be comfortable while you're in residence, um, and as well to assure your safety. I saw one earlier. Oh, wait, actually, never mind. I heard you answer it. It was about, oh, no, that's a lie. Um, somebody asked how long the semesters are. Um, yeah, yeah. Fall semester, September to December, winter, January to April, spring is May to June, and then summer is July um, to August. Typically, most students are in session from September to April and take summers off, but it is an option to take spring or summer classes. Okay, um, I think that is all of the questions that we have. I'm sorry if we missed your question, um, but please do feel free to reach out to our team. Um, you can reach out to your designated regional recruiter, or if you're not sure who that um, 
designated regional recruiter is, please send your questions to future.students at ucalgary.ca and we will assist you with um, your questions. Um, yeah, please feel free to reach out to our team. Thank you so much for attending uh, this evening and we look forward to seeing you around campus come September or before that, if you come for a campus tour. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Congratulations also for your office. <laughs>